It's been a few months since we've covered a new filament on this channel, which is partially due to us having already covered most of the more common materials, but also because there were a lot of different reviews and projects that I've been working on that sort of took priority to that. Well, today we're going to be taking a look at wood fill filament, which goes by a couple of different names. You'll see wood filled PLA, PLA with added wood fiber, or just wood fill, but for the most part, they are very similar, and because of that, will have very similar properties. Wood filament is actually the first exotic filament that I ever purchased, and I bought my first spool back in December of 2016 off of Amazon, which was Hatchbox brand. Since then, I have not really done a whole lot of printing with wood filament, so I was really curious to see sort of how this material has evolved from then to now. In today's video, we'll specifically be using a spool of timber fill from Filamentum that I've been holding onto for some time now actually to make this video. Timberfill comes in four different colors or tones, and the one we are using today is cinnamon. In today's video, we'll take a look at the properties of the material, how to print with this material, both on the hardware side as well as the slicing side, and of course, we will be doing some 3D printing. So, with all that being said, and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Starting off, let's talk a little bit about the material and its properties. Just about all of the wood filaments that I've seen out there are PLA based, and because of that, they'll have very similar thermal and mechanical properties, as well as relatively similar printing parameters. For timber fill specifically, it's listed as being a mixture of biopolymers filled with 15% of natural fibers. Filamentum does also have a TDS available for this filament, which I've linked in the video description. Pulling it up side by side with a standard PLA TDS, we can see that it is incredibly similar. The material has a little bit of a graininess to it, and it is without a doubt the most brittle material I have ever handled, even beating the copper filament that we printed with a few months ago. The absolute slightest bend in the filament path will cause the material to snap. However, it does get a little bit better after you've printed it, especially if you've got multiple walls or it's a bit of a thicker part. It's still going to be fairly brittle, but you don't have to worry about it snapping quite as easily as you would on just the 1.75 millimeter strand of material. The primary use case for this material would be to replicate real wood, and because it does contain, in this case, 15% natural fibers, it does a really good job of that. Functionally, you'll be able to use it for most of the same things that a traditional PLA would work for, but because of the wood fiber aspect of it, there are a couple of sort of simple and cool post-processing things that you can do to the material, should you want to, which we'll touch on a little bit later in this video. Next, let's take a look at the hardware requirements for printing with this material. For our printer today, we're going to be using the Anycubic Cobra, which is one of Anycubic's brand new machines that I got in a few weeks ago for testing. Starting with the hot end, just like standard PLA, it prints at a relatively low temperature, and having an all-metal hot end is not a requirement to print with this material. On filament print guide, they actually state the recommended printing temp from 165 to 185 Celsius. That seemed insanely low to me, and the range I found to be best for printing with it was between 190 Celsius and roughly 200 Celsius. As for the nozzle, I believed for a very long time that wood fill was abrasive, which ended up not being the case, so you don't need a hardened steel nozzle, and you can use a brass nozzle for printing with wood fill. With that being said, wood filled material or wood filled filament is probably the most clog prone material I have ever used, even more so than any of the carbon fiber nylons or really abrasive other materials. So I spent quite a long time trying to get a 0.4 millimeter nozzle profile dialed in, but ended up deciding it was a losing battle and swapped it out for a 0.6 millimeter brass nozzle that I had. Some of the other wood fills might be a little bit easier depending on the size of the fibers they have, but specifically for this timber fill, I would definitely recommend going with at least a 0.6 millimeter nozzle if you don't want to be pulling your hair out dealing with clogs nonstop. Like with any filament, having a higher quality extruder is going to give you the most consistent results. I have printed with a Bowden style extruder and wood filament many years ago, but considering how aggressively brittle this material is, having the ability to mount it on the very top of the printer and have it go straight down into the extruder with a very short filament path, the Cobra has a direct drive extruder. It is something that I was incredibly thankful for, and I think that if you have the option between direct drive and Bowden for this material, I would absolutely opt for a direct drive setup. As far as the bed goes, as long as your bed is leveled properly, you should have no issues with adhesion. It prints just like PLA as far as the adhesive and warping goes, meaning that it is very minimal. The powder-coated PEI on the Cobra was great, but if you've got 
glass that you prefer, or if you've got something like BuildTac, you shouldn't have any issues with adhesion. Next, let's jump over to Prusa Slicer to take a look at these settings that I used. For the Cobra, I started off with the built-in Artillery Genius Profile, as they are fairly similar in footprint and share comparable extruders. The main thing I had to change was the nozzle diameter from 0.4 to 0.6, the default retraction length of 1.9 millimeters worked relatively well for this machine. Hopping over to the filament settings, the best results I had for temperature were 195 Celsius on the hot end and 60 Celsius for the bed. I printed a couple of temp towers because with some wood fills, different temps will give you different tones in the wood, but I saw no real difference and 195 Celsius gave me the most consistent extrusion. On the cooling tab, just like regular PLA, you'll want cooling enabled. I set keep fan always on after the first layers at 100% fan speed. In Prusa Slicer or Super Slicer, you need to make sure enable auto cooling is disabled. Cura also has a setting for minimum layer time required, and you need that turned off if you're using Cura. The reason for this is that depending on your model, the slicer will ignore your speed settings in order to make sure each layer is at least a minimum amount of time. In Prusa Slicer, the default is five seconds per layer, and these slow speeds will cause all sorts of issues with clogging, so it is very important that you have it disabled. Heading over to the print settings tab, much of this is up to you. Since I have the larger 0.6 millimeter nozzle, I went with 0.3 layer lines with three walls as well as three top and bottom layers. For infill, I used my pretty standard 20% grid infill and I always run skirts to verify my first layer, so I had three skirt loops. When it comes to speed, this is where it's very important and something I fought a lot with early on. There's something in the wood fibers that likes to very quickly expand and stick inside of your hot end. The solution to this is to print faster, and it also explains why Color Fab recommends a minimum of 40 millimeters per second. I set just about everything to 50 millimeters a second, but you can scale up from there if you want. For small perimeters, external perimeters, top solid infill, and first layer speed, I opted for 40 millimeters a second, but everything else at a solid 50 worked great. Next, we're ready to print, and I have known for months the model that I wanted to print out with this material. Joe from Breaks and Makes, or if you've been on YouTube for at least a year or two in the 3D printing sphere, known as 3D Maker Noob, designed a rattan planter or a set of them, and they're absolutely gorgeous, and I have been wanting to print them out, but I've been holding off so that way I can use this wood material. He has a collection of five planters available on my mini factory for $3. I'll have a link in the description over to these models if you want to purchase them for yourself. He also makes really great content, so I'll have a link in the description over to his Breaks and Makes channel, as well as his 3D Maker Noob channel, so that you can check them out. I printed out one in full size as well as another shrunken down one to roughly 50%. When this material actually does print, it's pretty awesome. It gives off sort of a popping sound, which I wouldn't describe as the same popping sound that you'll hear when your filament's wet, which is a terrible sound. It almost reminds me of crackling of a fireplace or if you're at a campfire and the wood's kind of crackling. Obviously it's much lower, but there is sort of a wood crackly sound when this material is printing. On top of that, it gives off sort of a wood aroma, which the only way I can describe is, is a fairly pleasant and fresh scent. So two very unique things. Yes, they're short lived because it's just while you're printing. And do I think that this is good to get as a uh, white noise slash air freshener? No, but I am just saying that they are two kind of cool things that I noticed and have noticed in the past when printing with wood filled materials. It also does retain a little bit of that wood smell after you are done printing, but it's not nearly as much as during the print itself. I was really happy with how the large pot turned out, but the smaller pot did have a bit of stringing to it. The other cool thing about this material is that it sands like a dream. And as, as far as anything like stringing goes, if you just take either a hard brush or even a soft bristle brush and you brush over your model, those little strings or those little hairs will break right off and it's super easy to clean up your print. For these rattan baskets, I'm really happy with how they look and I think that the timber fill cinnamon is just a really nice looking material, but you can if you want to actually use wood stains on wood filled materials. Some of the other wood filled PLAs out there have a little bit more of a neutral or bland color to them. And in those instances, you can, if you have wood fill or you're a woodworker or you go and get some, it's a really cool way to spice up and customize your prints in those models. And that has been Woodfill. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you have a much better understanding of what this material is and how to print with it if you do decide that you want to print with it. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are on Woodfill and if you've printed with it, what your experience has been like so far. If you've got any other sort of tips, tricks, or recommendations, also let us know. And I do have a few other 
sort of unique materials that we will be covering on this channel. But if there is some filament that we haven't covered already in our filaments playlist, let me know in the comments down below and I will absolutely take a look at it and see if that's something I want to add to the list of materials I plan on covering. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel furthermore, I'll place links down below in the description over to our Patreon, where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you, allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot, and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.